Pharaoh is releasing with eight faction leaders, and we're going to look at each of them in turn. But today we're starting with Seti II, the legitimate king of Egypt following his father's death. We are into the tail end of the 19th dynasty of Egypt, and the year is somewhere around 1203 when Pharaoh Merneptah passes into the Egyptian afterlife. Of course, Seti must have been doing something prior to that date. He wasn't simply born from the ashes of his dead father, as awesome as that would be, but his activities prior to kingship are, like so much in this era, obscure to us. And this is a running theme throughout this entire era. The Total War team has, apparently deliberately, chosen a period in which very little is known historically about the main actors. In their interviews, it seems they did this so that they could project whatever personalities they wanted on these historical characters and have plenty of flexibility for turning an historical period into a video game without having to bend iron-hard facts. Now that's fine for a game, and it's okay for us as well. We're not going to get too deep into all the debates, maybe some will get mentioned, but Mostly, we're going to use the Historian's Toolkit here to paint us a picture of the people and the time period. So though we don't know exactly what Young said he was doing while his father was still king, we do know a few things. He was likely born before his father was king, and as is typical for the grandson of a king, especially in the 19th dynasty and later, he was given a nice, cushy government job, both to keep the levers of power within the family and to help potential heirs gain skills. Before being king, Seti held the titles of Nobleman, Chief of the Two Lands, King's Scribe, Great General, and Eldest Son of the King, gradually getting more and more prominent as it became increasingly clear that he would succeed his elderly father. On the death of Merneptah, the funeral was properly organized and Seti II was crowned and widely recognized as the legitimate successor pharaoh by the majority of Egypt. Which by itself is unusual, it's been a good while since Egypt has seen a disputed succession at this point. On one hand, we have Amun Mesa, whose origins are obscure but was likely an elder son of an elder son of Ramesses II, someone whose father was older than Merneptah, and so Amun Mesa may have seen himself as being of higher rank than Seti as the more senior grandson of the great Ramesses. We'll look at Amun Mesa in more detail in his own episode, but for now he's down in the south, in Nubia. At about the same time, there is a figure who isn't clearly known, who gets called Merneptah B. He's only known from a handful of carvings in the northern delta region where he is seen with a kingly uraeus carved into his forehead, indicating that for at least a brief time, this mysterious figure claimed kingship. The fact that little is known of this northern pretender could mean that he and Seti soon came to an amicable agreement about the proper succession. Or it could mean that Seti pulled his army up north right quick and murdered anyone who opposed his rule. Now, Seti came to the throne already married to a woman named Takat. She was, as was Egyptian royal custom, a close relative of his, though the specifics are unclear. Now, Amun Mesa's mother was also named Takat, which has led some to suspect that Amun Messi was Seti's son, but we'll look at why I doubt that in Amun Mesa's video. Anyway, in Seti's second year on the throne, he takes a new highest royal wife, a woman named Tauseret. Now, a pharaoh had a lot of women, of course, but by custom, he had only one great wife at a time. And so the big question here is whether Tahat simply died, which does happen from time to time, or if she was somehow involved in the politics of the succession and ended up on the wrong side. Now, whether because of a removal of Tahat or the marriage to Tausret, or just unrelated coincidence, 
Amon Mesa seems to have decided now to switch gears from shepherding his power to expanding. And over the next 18 months, we see Seti totally on the back foot. He gets pushed up the Nile, out of his capital, until all he holds is the Delta region. Through all of it, he remains pharaoh of at least some part of Egypt, with at least some amount of support, but for the next two years, it isn't clear what he's doing aside from surviving. One possibility, distantly suggested by an obscure boast in a tomb, is that a certain royal scribe, a high-ranking fellow of Syrian descent named Ramesses Kaimnetjer Bey, may have done something. We have no idea what he could have done, but it seems Bey, who is the playable character Bey, claims credit for brokering some number of backroom deals to secure Seti some alliances, either within the government or among those with the military force to help him push back against Amun Mesa. And push back he did. After two years out of power, Seti returned to Thebes triumphantly. Amun Mesa may have died in the fighting or may have escaped down south, but either way, Seti appears to be, for the moment, unopposed. But despite this, he is in poor condition. Now that he controls the Valley of the Kings once again, work continues on his tomb, which, by pharaonic tradition, had begun as soon as he became king, but which had been paused during Amun Mesa's ascendancy. Yet this tomb work is much more hurried and less ambitious than it had been before, suggesting that it was widely known to be a tomb which would soon see active service for the ailing Seti. But it isn't only the king who's ailing. Control over Canaan and documentation in the area more generally appears to be slipping, and the nation as a whole is growing more desperate, a consequence of both war and poor harvests, leading to increased crime and banditry, which may provide a temporary relief for the criminals, but causes the overall situation to worsen even further. Still, Seti cannot hope to begin working on this problem until his crown is secure, and he spends the next year or two in a vengeful campaign to root out Amun Mesa's supporters from the government, even all the way down to the camps of stone carvers and workmen, and also issues a damnatio on his name, sending out agents to carve Amun Mesa's name off every royal monument he could reach and replacing it with his own. Now this last is only fair, Amun Mesa had done the same, but all this erasing of monuments does leave us with far less historical information on the Civil War than we might otherwise have. Still, it all does mean that Seti was fairly unproductive in his final year or so. His concern with establishing order in the kingdom, with restoring defaced temples, with getting all of Egypt back under a single ruler may speak to naked political ambition, or it may reflect a genuine concern for restoring Egypt from the chaos that he saw back to the glory he remembered from his youth under Ramesses. We don't know how he died. It could have been natural, as some death was apparently expected soon by the tomb builders. It could have been some sort of poisoning by those around him to simulate the effect of illness. Or it could have been a murder, using his existing illness as cover. The uncertain political situation makes bad ends seem more plausible than normal. We also aren't certain that we have the right mummy, as the mummy which has been tentatively identified as Seti II is only about 25 years old which, if true, has a lot of implications for his story. And because of the fact that his father Mernepta was so old, it makes it unlikely that his oldest son could have been so young. Therefore, it's often assumed that the mummy of Seti has not yet been found, and the one we have with his name on it has been mislabeled somewhere, something that isn't unheard of with mummies. Now, in game terms, Seti's faction is definitely the best for your first campaign. 
If they're following this picture of history, he should begin in or around Memphis, quite close to modern-day Cairo, the traditional capital of Egypt in this period and one of the richest areas in the country. He should start with a large population, a lot of legitimacy, and a high position in the Egyptian government, and possibly existing alliances with many of the power players. He will have a bit of building up to do in order to ensure that he becomes Pharaoh at the death of Merneptah, but mostly his concern should be about holding what Egypt traditionally held, defending the nation even as it crumbles around him, whether that requires alliance or violence, and preferring a strategy of isolating one opponent at a time and crushing him, as may have happened with Merneptah B, and may represent the comeback against Amun Mesa. By acting responsibly, and even piously, Seti has the best chance of surviving the Bronze Age collapse in the hands of a skilled player. And really, that general attitude, protector of Egypt, that's something I'm excited to see in the game. Seti may not have been the ultimate victor historically, but he certainly had the most legitimacy of anyone in the arena. Now definitely make sure you subscribe to make sure you hear about the next guy, Seti's mortal foe Amun Mesa, and leave a comment down below with any ancient history questions or with your thoughts on Seti. But for now, we say farewell to the legitimate king of Egypt. Strong bull, mighty in strength. Strong bull, beloved of Re. Strong bull, protector of Egypt. Strong of arm, subduing the nine bows. Powerful of arm, subduing the nine bows. Protector of Egypt who subdues foreign lands. Great of terror in all lands. Great of strength in all lands, powerful of forms like Ray, chosen of Ray, beloved of Amun, Sethi Merneptah. Thank you for watching.